I'm sure you've seen this hat around. After all, this short-brimmed natty number has been gracing heads for over a hundred years, which is no mean feat for a fashion statement. But did you know that this humble hat has a literary history? Trilby is a novel by George du Maurier. Haven't read it? Well, you're clearly not from the late 19th century then, because Trilby was hugely popular in its time. Let's set the scene. It's the 1850s in radical bohemian Paris. Trilby O'Farrell is a young, non-conforming, free spirit who goes from being working class and tone deaf to a world class, world famous opera singer. And the people were obsessed. Trilby mania was absolutely huge. You could get Trilby dolls, Trilby soap, Trilby ham, a little pin for your scarf shaped like Trilby's foot, ice cream shaped like her foot and sausages shaped like her foot. In fact, Trilby's feet, described as... A true inspiration of shape and colour, all made up of delicate lengths and subtly modulated curves and noble straightnesses. ...were so popular, the expression Trilby feet caught on to describe the fashionably shoeless. But forget about feet. In Florida, there is a town named Trilby, with streets named after the characters in the novel. As well as being the centre of a craze, Trilby is said to have empowered women to do awesome things, like call themselves artists, and things that seemed awesome at the time, like taking up smoking. And then, of course, there's the famous Trilby hat, which, now hold on to your hat, is not in the book. The Trilby hat, which became so much more famous than the novel it shares a name with, is nowhere to be found in its pages. It was, in fact, actress Dorothea Baird who stepped onto a London stage in a production adapted from the story, wearing this smart little hat that came to be known as the Trilby. The Trilby hat went off. It was a stone-cold hit with wealthy men in Britain and has been worn by singers, detectives and singing detectives ever since. And what ever happened to Trilby and her dreadful singing voice? Well, she was seduced and exploited by a total creep. He hypnotised her so that she could sing beautifully, but only under his spell. Yuck. Sounds like a total Svengali. Because he was one. Literally. Svengali is the villain from the novel Trilby. So not only did we get this cool hat, we also got a villain so archetypal he became a noun. Svengali a person who exercises a controlling or mesmeric influence on another, especially for a sinister purpose. And what did our author make of all this? Well, he never wanted to write the damn book. In fact, he tried to convince Henry James to do it for him. George de Maurier was so traumatised by his own success that on his deathbed he proclaimed that Trilby's popularity had actually killed him. Guess he wouldn't have been too keen to visit Trilby Florida's Svengali Square then.